Greetings, this is May 26th at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning and we're looking at some photographs of the mountains around Lytton. And two weeks ago there was snowpack in the hills, blossoms in the trees. Now we are in a situation of a fire season full underway. Today we have a forest fire at Alley Lake. This is grown to 2100 hectares last count. It is now considered an interface fire, which means uh, structures, property may be involved. Uh, I'll put links to the BC Wildfire Service so you can get all the up-to-date information and the TNRD has put out an evacuation order map and an evacuation alert, which you can see is uh, moving to the north. Wind conditions have been pushing fire behavior to the northeast. Take a look at those maps if you're in the area, if you're living there or traveling there, so you know what routes and where you can go. Uh, we're pulling back right now and we'll take a look at the area of the fire around Vedette to the east of Vedette. We can see Sheridan, Bridge Lake to the north, Green Lake to the northwest, Bonaparte quite nearby just to the east, northeast, and uh, Highway 97 over on the left hand side, Highway 5 on the right hand side, and uh, Savona and Highway 1 down at the bottom. I was wondering how does this compare to the Elephant Hill fire of last summer? And let's take a look at an overlay. These are two different map sources, but it gives us a rough indication. This was the Elephant Hill wildfire perimeter, the large area in the middle of the screen. We can see that this younger Vedette fire is showing much of the same characteristics. It's burning on the outside edges, looking for new fuel, it's moving in a northeasterly direction and uh, much uh, similar terrain and wind conditions as uh, the Elephant Hill fire from last year. We'll zoom in now to the NRC's beta map. Uh, we can see the gray perimeter estimate around the area to the east of Vedette. Uh, several lakes involved, Joe Ross Creek in the center. If we take away the perimeter, we can see a lot of random behavior on the north edge, the southern edge, and it has been flowing eastward uh, with outlying red infrared spots picked up by satellite, giving us an indication of where heat and fire may be. Uh, if we go to the 6 and 12 hour map, fewer new spots, but we can almost see what looks to be some dots in a line on the northern edge. That may be a strategic signature of some fire suppression activity going on. I'll come back to this theory, but first take, let's take a look at the terrain. Uh, here we're looking at an overview of the southern interior north of Savona into the uh, hills and plateaus of the Caribou. We can see the red spots in the center. This is where Vedette and uh, the fire is to the east of Vedette. And here we see the terrain. It's kind of come up from the river valley, Dead Man River, and moved on to the plateau. There's uh, uh, some rolling hills, uh, varied terrain. There's also quite varied vegetation. There can be some cut blocks involved in there. We've zoomed in again. Uh, we can see uh, the Vedette Lake over on the left-hand side, the Dead Man River Valley. There is uh, Joe Ross Creek in the center of the fire perimeter. And if we go to the satellite photograph, here we see a lot of variation where there's forested blocks. Now these photos may be out of date some years, so there's going to be grass, meadow, uh, swamp. Uh, there's a lot of lakes in there. Zooming in further, it's hard to see on this image, but those red dots correspond with where that forested vegetation is. However, these infrared red spots can be out 300, 500, a kilometer, depending on the, the light refraction as their sensors are picking up the data. There's one in Boyer Lake, center of your screen, lower uh, portion of the screen. The fire isn't there but it's being picked up from that area. 
So let's go back to a terrain map with the infrared activity indicated. Uh, this is from the M3 data at the NRC, and I'll put links below to uh, these applications. We can see the terrain, and if you look at the northern flank, uh, there's a straight line of uh, infrared dots indicated. This appears to be an almost strategic behavior. Uh, because, as we see on windy.com right now, winds have shifted and we're getting a subtle breeze coming in from the northwest, uh, allowing suppression crews to push the fire back on itself. And if we look forward into the future, we can see that this is just a brief occurrence. Uh, most of the prevailing winds will be occurring from the south and in the middle of the afternoon or towards the end of the afternoon, each day there's kind of a peak in the wind. Let's call it the three o'clock breeze or the four o'clock breeze. Winds are going to pick up. There could be significant gusts in your area. And depending on the terrain, whether the wind is being forced through channels and gullies and uh, making a break onto the plateaus, there's going to be a lot of variation. And if we step back, zoom out in Windy, we can see the patterns developing where there's these large arcs that are generally a westerly flow, but it's coming from the north or it's coming from the south. Uh, they may, crews may be taking advantage of the situation right now overnight, uh, suppressing it on the northern flank of this fire and uh, we hope that this is working in their favor. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, winds coming from the south. Tuesday looks to start swinging and come from the north, depending on your location. Uh, jumping to the Big Bar Cam, I went back there to take a look, and it was pretty much a clear day. It looked like there could have been some haze that might have been coming from the Lillooet fire. Uh, but generally it looked quite clear as western breezes are pushing everything to the east. Moving over to the Sheridan cam, I thought I might get a better view of the haze. Uh, that was offline for me today, but I'll put the links below to Drive BC. It's a great system. You can see around the province and get an idea of where uh, fire activity may be occurring based on what you see on the screen. And as I mentioned earlier, I will put a link to the NRC site so that you can check on the infrared data as it occurs. They update it quite frequently. Uh, every few hours or so, there's going to be an update. And it's quite data rich. You can click on one of these individual dots and it'll tell you a myriad of information. And I'll have to look up and find the legend for it. Uh, you can find out uh, the fuel type, uh, what they guesstimate it to be, the, uh, the confidence level, whether they feel it is uh, fire behavior, and you can see the growth over a period of time historically. So if you're on the site, do check the date that you're looking at the correct day. I'll put the link for um, May 26, but you'll have to make sure that you're looking at uh, the current settings. I hope you find the information useful. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, a shout out to the people of Dead Man River Valley, Vedette. Uh, they were with us uh, in the Elephant Hill fire situation. They were all along the eastern flank, uh, putting up support there. And they're in a situation now where uh, fire has approached us too quickly in the year. I was up in the bush, I took these pictures. This is my little piece of paradise and I was busy, frantically even, uh, trying to get wood pulled out, stacked up and dealt with. However, taking a walk in the forested areas off property, it uh, is quite dense in there. There are pockets where a lot of the mountain pine beetle, the standing dead pine, has come down over the winter again and piled up. It's quite hazardous to walk through some areas and bit by bit we keep cleaning it out. So uh, remember what we learned from last year and if uh, you're watching these videos for the first time, get your resources together now. Uh, 
plan all your uh, papers, important necessities, uh, medicines, have a go pack, have that ready to go, know the routes that you're going to take, and pay attention to the government websites. They're going to give you up-to-date notices and let you know when things happen, where evacuation alerts are. The fire season has come on very early this year. Uh, if you get a chance to green up things around your property or uh, trim some of the low-lying branches, get rid of uh, dried wood, dead wood, uh, at least keep it away from any structures of yours, and keep your nose to the breeze. Everybody be safe out there. It's fire season again. Uh, I wish we didn't have to do this. I'd like to take you all to the beach, but we're at it again.